come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast. We're a movie talk show podcast that comes your way every Saturday. Whether you're ready for it or not, in our quest for total world domination, and you can help us out with that by going over to wherever you found us and hitting that like or subscribe button because all that stuff helps us uh, rise through the ranks of the algorithms and become the fastest growing movie podcast in the galaxy. I like how you're looking far out like you can see it in the future. I, know I yeah. can. I'm, I I'm can. We're visualizing yeah. it. Yeah. 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 Okay. <laughs> That's how you do it. Yeah, yeah there it is. See it. You see the purple star in the horizon. I'm like looking um, over. I'm like, where? <laughs> is it by your Resident Evil poster? <laughs> where? Second star on the right. Straight yep, on to straight morning. On morning. <laughs> You're probably wondering who are these people are talking to you. Well, they're the internet radio superstars. Holly. Sean. Michaela. And I'm Colin. And tonight we watched a movie that was chosen by... Michaela. What do we watch tonight? Where'd Summer of Canaan rolls on uh, with Cyborg. Ooh, mm. from the year. 1989. Starring... Jean-Claude Van Damme. The directed from Brussels. The muscles. Brussels. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Directed by... Albert Pune? Mm, what do we know do we him know from? Albert Pune. I have a Some grudge. Saturday Night Freak Show favorites. I have a grudge against Albert Pune yeah. that I don't think will ever go away. Really? I, I think Colin I do. might as well. Really? We watched a movie called Mean Guns. Me, I was yep. going to say Mean, mean Guns. Guns. Yeah, which Colin didn't you say one point in time that was like the, the, your, the, worst, the worst thing you've watched like on the podcast ever, right? For a while, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. That it was held the title. Rough. Yep. Ru- a rough four hour movie is what For a while. <laughs> Jesus. I, no, when you say for a while, I want to know what movie took that crown. I know, I can't remember. <laughs> yeah. It feels like something else has come around. Yeah. Yeah, it feels recall. like something did, but man, that yeah. one... But, oh, and Mean Guns was a long time ago, and you're still saying that, so it's really oh, yeah. stuck with you. No, yeah, because Sharknado, I think, might have been... I hated that, but I think that came after. It mean, did, mean yeah, Guns it did. was... Uh, yeah. <laughs> that was, yeah. But we're going to get into, I guess, could, Albert Pune. We, right, we <laughs> yeah. could lambast uh, Sharknado yeah. and make fun of it. But right. Mean Guns, just, yeah, it was a movie in need of editing. It's like they shot, you know, four hours... It was two hours, but it felt like it just went on forever. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> Something that all Albert Pune movies. Yes, yes they all have, have that in common. common. Yes. He's on the uh, Freak Show Wall of Fame. I know you're going to run down a list of movies, but mm-hmm. he's on for three. This one included, uh, but also thanks to MF Mad, the keeper of the Saturday Night Freak Show Wall Thank of you. Fame. He also did uh, Captain America, mm-hmm. which we did, did. on oh, this right. show. Yeah, the original, Red Brown. Right? Original. The Red Red Brown. Brown. Everything comes back to well, Red the Brown. Original. The original. Sorry, not the yeah. <laughs> right, right, right. Wait, not, no, Brown. not we're not Red Brown. No, the it was uh, oh crap. Salinger or yeah, Matt Salinger. Matt, Sa- Matt Salinger was it Matt? Was it Matt Salinger? Or was it it's Matt not in the Red movie? Brown? No, Red Brown no, Red was, was in the TV. Uh, oh, yeah. the TV show. Oh, yeah. With yeah. The big motorcycle yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. That was Red Brown. Yeah, right. This one was. It was actually. Menachem Golan, right, had split off from Canada and made mm. uh, twenty first century films mm-hmm. and uh, and Mean Guns, of mm-hmm. course. Oh, yeah. What yeah. else yeah. is uh, <laughs> what else do we know? Albert Pune from Kickboxer two, three, and four. Yes, Damn. <laughs> did them all. Yep. Yes, uh, the Sword and the Sorcerer. Yeah, yeah, that, his first I think movie. That's significant because that was a actual theatrical mm-hmm. film. Yes, um, and it came out I think before. Um, Conan the Barbarian. It came out in 1982. Yeah. Yeah. And that was in that period where everybody was like Dungeons and Dragons and Lord of the Rings was a big thing and Star Wars and fantasy films. And so I think because he had done that, I think that launched his career. Oh, yeah. Right. And then he made a sequel 30 years later starring with Kevin Sorbo and it was called Tales of Abelard. What was it? Tales of a Lost Empire. Oh, that's a sequel? Yes, oh, God. it is the sequel. Abelard, Tales of an Ancient Empire. <laughs> Yikes! Okay. The sequel to no, Sword no. Sword. I mean, did anyone involved in that think it was going to be successful? Anyone? Uh, no. No. Okay. Well, he also <laughs> made a sequel. Um, you remember Streets of Fire? Yeah. Sure. Oh yes. Yeah. Okay. Love it. Uh, he made the sequel, and I think at this point in time, it has never been released. And it was <laughs> called Road to Hell, and it brings back Michael Pere, and they redo the songs. And it's like, and I think Deborah Val- Van Valkenvert, what, uh, well, she's in it again. Is there any footage from this? Yeah, yeah is there a trailer. See it. Yeah. I've I seen see the trailer. It. It's awful. <laughs> it's awful. Oh, oh no! I, I that see had, it. had a Doesn't flashback. Have Glory here. from uh, Buffy, <sighs> isn't she? So, I, okay, uh, yeah. I vaguely remember it, but it's oh, it, I remember it being awful. Oh. Yeah. Okay. It's all like green screen. Yeah. And digital. It's, I mean, it's it looks, orange and yeah. like they made it for five bucks. It's like green screen from what year? It's from the. It's from 2008, 
I think you so, said. And but it looks like it was from like 1991. Or yeah. Something. It looks really Yikes. Bad. That's crazy. Yeah. Oh, unfortunate. <laughs> oh. Doll man. He also did doll man. Doll man. Yep. That's right. Yep. We haven't tackled that one yet. Nope. And no. also stay tuned for Alien from LA. It's been on my list for a long That's time. Right. We'll get there. <laughs> That's the Kathy Ireland. Kathy one. Ireland mm-hmm. was Max in a movie. Havoc. Yes. Curse of the Dragon. So Pune had a career fueled by a theatrical release mm-hmm. that led to Canon. Well, I mean, it sounds like he also went through well, no, after Canon, mm-hmm. he went through um Empire uh, Full Moon. Correct. Mm. Right, and mm-hmm. then eventually trailed off into direct video stuff. It's all those like fake movies that like Bruce Willis and Nick Cage make, like all those those types of titles. Yeah, like Rain of Fire and just generic like Interstellar, like Civil that. War, yeah. Shadows of the Empire. Yeah, stuff like you, that. I know Sean has it pulled up, but I know that Michaela, you researched this. How many movies has Albert Poon made in his career? It's a lot. Hold on, let me pull. It. I have the IMDb open. I know. How many? How many He's directed 55. That's Yeah, that's quite He's a bit. He's written 25. Yeah, but directed 55 movies, right? Mm-hmm. That's, yeah, that's, that's a lot. That's a, he, that's a he, lot. His wow. last movie was in 2018, so he was yeah. still working up oh, until yeah. recently. Yeah, oh, yeah. I, people I've met um, and doing the little movies that I've done before have worked with him on multiple movies. So, yeah, he's still out there doing Did cheap shit. Did they work with him on Bullet Face? Because I would like to know more about the making of Bullet Face. Yeah, that sounds like a Michael Scott villain. Maybe. (laughs) It's from 2010. It's recent. (laughs) Yeah. Mean Guns was Christopher Lambert and Ice T, right? Yes. uh, Pune has also done a a Ice T music video or two. Yeah. Yeah. And he had, uh, I think, Cyborg uh, put him into that, like, you're going to do. Those cutting edge cyberpunk movies, like oh. Nemesis, which had one of the coolest video store boxes uh, than the movie with Olivier, Olivier, Olivier Gruner or whatever. It looks oh, like yeah. Oliver Gruner, mm. which we talked about at one point. <laughs> we did an episode. He must have been in. Yeah. In the future, it pays to be more than human. Yes. <laughs> it looks cool. Look it at does that. look that cool. It looks like an awesome poster. That's like, not, I like that cool. poster. How do you... Olive- Olivier, Olivier Gruner, 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 or Grunet, Grunet. or Grunet. Grunet. Yeah. It depends on what country he's from. Yeah. All right. So, Canon films. Canon. I like the way Michaela that we have been charting the rise, mm-hmm. uh, the the and now the fall. Yes, this is the sad <laughs> milestone for Canon because this is the last theatrical release they had before they went bankrupt. Oh, so we're witnessing the end, guys. So where was um. Lombada, the Forbidden Dance. That was prior to this. I believe. I feel so. just by name alone feels like it's near the downfall. <laughs> okay. Well, the break-in movies and Lombada movies all came out within like less Wait, than a Lombada two years. Lombada movies. Man. Yeah, there's several. I think there's two at least. Oh, okay. Lombada two. Oh, because there were competing ones. Yeah. I think Golan didn't Golan Glo- or uh, sorry Glo- Golan Yorbis didn't he try to make one and Menachem Golan because they like yeah. when Canon they imploded, would compete with each other. Yeah. So they made, there's like, yeah, the mm-hmm. Forbidden Dance and yep. Lombada, the something, or yeah. whatever. Yeah. They're like, and, well, and then, so there's the two break-in movies, but then Rappin is also considered the spiritual se- third break-in movie because Ice-T is in it as the same character. So it's the oh. break-in multiverse. Shared universe. Yeah. And somebody like, else yeah. tried to compete with Beat Street. Yep. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so listen to our episodes on break-in for more on that. Well, there's going to be a little bit of a break-in tie-in here because if there we're charting is. the, because we, we have to. We have to talk a little bit about obviously our star, yes, and how mm-hmm. he uh, rose up through the the ranks mm-hmm. of canon and the fall of canon and mm-hmm. the rise and fall of canon. So Jean Claude Van Damme, right? Um, let's go back to breaking, mm-hmm. okay? <laughs> He's an you're extra. Like, well, there's going to be a little overlap right with that episode, right. but an overactive tell, extra. Yeah. yeah. How yeah. did Jean Claude Van Damme come to the attention? Of canon films, he he's a background extra in one of the breakdance scenes on the beach and breaking, and mm-hmm. he just kept like dancing and looking into the camera so much that they like kept coming over me like, dude, you gotta chill a little bit. Like you, you're an extra. Like be don't be extra. And <laughs> so he they they got to know him through that, and through that they kind of developed a relationship. And JCVD was very insistent on being cast in movies and i then mean eventually i mean think, ab- did it. think so. about it you're working on breaking mm-hmm. and there's this crazy dude in a onesie that keeps, keeps dancing doing the splits. keeps doing the splits and dancing yep. and you go and talk to him and he's got this like crazy brussels accent yeah like who's right. not gonna yeah. want to work with him and right. everything plus right. i feel like jean claude van damme is always like everyone should look at me mm-hmm. yeah like, should, i should be body. center yeah <laughs> it feels like yeah that. 
He feels like, like he'd be aggressive in that aspect. Sean, did you ever see him when you were in L.A.? Because I've heard like you're not a true L.A. resident until you see him do the splits in an alleyway. I hear he just like, <laughs> <laughs> like I just true? hear he's always hanging out in West Hollywood, just like doing the splits oh. for attention and well, stuff. Shut yeah. up! No, I've heard so many time. podcasts tell that really? same story that are yeah that are just based in L.A. Yeah. Well, shit. So, listener, I mean, if you've, still if you've seen him, yeah, yeah, well, he did Let the know. truck commercial where yeah, the splits between the trucks not too yeah. long ago. I yeah, sorry. I remember. I think the story was like he w- marched into, you know, Menachem Golan's mm-hmm. uh, office and uh, it was like, you got to put me in a movie. You got to right. put me in a movie. And he's like, yeah, kid, whatever. And then he did a, he do kick. a kick. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and it was like, oh, OK. Yeah. Take a cigarette you know, out of somebody's we'll, mouth. Yeah. Like, we'll figure mm-hmm. out something for you to right. do. And did that, he march into his office like he marches towards people in this movie? Because <laughs> that would, that would uh, get your attention. Yeah, I would definitely get but my yeah, attention. Yeah, not in the best way, though. It's just yeah. like, hmm, we need to work on the walk. Not yeah, it's not a good walk. How's your run? Oh, 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 yeah. oh that's worse. It's, it's worse. worse. Oh, it's never, worse. Let's go back to the walk. You know what? We're going we're gonna to make sure your movies have no running in them because yeah. it's just not a good look. Okay, so explain to the folks at home He's what's going to travel by roundhouse kick. Well, yeah, what's wrong with well, apparently the, he teleports. the Van Damme uh, walk? It's floppy. It's it's his arm is it's come okay, up the, too high. It's and all hand flop. movement because the run is floppy. He yeah. has fists, but he holds them out a little bit like he's this. got the suitcase hands from Seinfeld. He does have suitcase hands. Yes, he's got yes. going on there where it's not exactly. He's not. Posed it's like right. he's carrying invisible suitcases, like that yeah. Seinfeld and episode. when yeah. he's running, but he's he like a little Jack Sparrow. Yeah, <laughs> yes, this is too true. floppy. His it's arms very come up floppy. too high, and they bounce too much. Yeah. But it's like not only is he just doing the suitcases, but he's like a leaning forward and trudging. Yeah, like he's yes. like coming at you, well, like he's late to the down, airport. At you. Yeah. <laughs> Like he's a, like he's pissed off because his flight is delayed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's got a heavy he's suitcase. Yes, the yeah. exactly. <laughs> I think we really painted a picture there. Yeah, I, I hope think so. so. Yeah. For you, listener, I hope so. It really makes you appreciate the Tom Cruise run, right? Like, oh yeah, yeah. Like yeah. I know people and always the talk Stallone about run too. Yeah, but his like neck doesn't move when he runs. Right. <laughs> mm-hmm. I don't think it can. Yeah, not anymore. After we're done recording, we're gonna have to watch that the video. video. The, the video. Yeah, the there's guy. a video that Michaela sent me that it's spectacular. He like mimics like famous runs, all the famous movie oh, runs. Yeah, yeah have you seen that guy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That's, that's a good down. one. It's a good one. Jim Carrey's like. Yeah, the Jim Carrey one's great. Yeah, yeah. It's the Moe's the Mo's one's my favorite. Yeah, yeah. Moe's from The Office. Oh, does he? Yeah, oh, he, he does. does. Mo's from yeah, the office. that one's yeah. my favorite. He does it. It's mm-hmm. it's a good video. Everybody check. It's it. It's funny. <laughs> I will check it out after this podcast. Yep. I'm the only one who hasn't seen it, so I gotta I gotta because it's this. comedy, Colin. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> also, well, I was like of, doom no. scrolling the internet for an hour before I saw it. So yeah. If you haven't seen, is it, it recent? You're probably a healthier person oh, for it. Yes, I've been around for like a couple months. So Van Dam uh, gets his first role with Cannon in uh, break in technically. Okay, well, well, uh, his Cannon first extra. main role was because uh, I think he had been maybe before Cannon was he No Retreat No No Surrender, which we did on this show. Yes, right. We have an episode on No Retreat No Surrender, but I don't think that was a Cannon movie. No, I could be wrong. We played the Evil Russian. I don't think so. Right? Oh. What a delightful movie that was. And then, because uh, the ghost of Bruce Lee is in it. <laughs> yep. and then, God uh, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> I have not seen this movie. <laughs> it was uh, kind of nuts. It's, and then It's pretty nuts. Yeah. I forgot about that movie. Did I pick it? <laughs> yes, you did. <laughs> <laughs> and then Holly, remember before the pandemic happened, we were going to go, uh, Rift Tracks was doing it live. Oh yeah, and we were going to go. We were going to go yeah. and then it got canceled. The entire tour was just them doing no... Re- I'm sorry. I always get the title wrong. No retreat. No ne- surrender. No I always yeah. want to say no retreat, never surrender. Yeah. That's, not right. that's, never, that's never retreat, never surrender from. What movie is that? Never uh, give up, never surrender. Uh, over the. T- no. Was it over the top? <laughs> over might be no, I think it's small top. soldiers. No. <laughs> never give up, never surrender. Never surrender <laughs> the wraith. Yeah. Was no, there a song called the- no I okay. think of Tommy Lee you Jones saying it. Let's just it. assign no. it to a bunch of movies and <laughs> I think say it's all of them. But okay. yeah. Like everything you've said, uh, that would be like, yeah, that sounds right. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so it was Bloodsport. Was galaxy the first, Quest. Uh, I'm sorry. Oh, wow. <laughs> never galaxy give up, Quest. never surrender. That's Galaxy Quest. <laughs> wow. Okay, got there. Very but far it, away. Yeah, it showed up. Woo. There okay. you go. All right. All right. Uh, yeah, so it was Bloodsport, yep. Kickboxer, yep. and then yep. finally uh, uh, Cyborg. Yes. Okay, so this is... Uh, the holy JCVD trifecta, I guess, right? <laughs> yeah. Because, well, after this, I think the like he one, went... Um, he got like major movies. He got mm-hmm. Universal... Pictures put him in Lionheart. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was eventually in uh, uh, um, Universal Soldier. Universal the Soldier. Quest. Death Warrant. <laughs> double Impact. Yeah, double and impact. those are the yeah. and Hard Target. With, hard. You know, hard. Stay target. tuned for Hard Target. Last Action Hero. <laughs> yeah, 
So, I mean, he had like, that was his, that was kind of like, he was, uh, this is pre the big rise of Jean-Claude Van Damme. This is yeah. his, his, his pain, his dues, right. mm-hmm. establishing himself. Okay. Yeah, but, yeah, that's before we get to Time Cop and Street Fighter. That's when he's. Mm. Oh, Street Fighter. <laughs> But this mm. movie, Cyborg, is happening at the end of canon. So what led to the death of canon? Uh, they had a couple of misses in a row and went and eventually went bankrupt from it. Which they, I think we, can, we covered most of yes. them. Yes. Probably. I think the outlier is Invaders <laughs> from Mars. We haven't yep. done that one. I have one. not done that one. Toby Hooper? Yeah. Yep. Oh, yeah. He did, he, yeah. They did they a three-deal yeah. thing with mm-hmm. Toby Hooper for Texas Chainsaw, Life Force, and mm-hmm. Invaders from Mars. And Life mm-hmm. Force and Invaders from Mars like tank but yep. were huge mo- budget movies yes well Spider-Man. and they were also at this time trying to do the spider-man movie and then the licensing with mattel and marvel fell through so this movie the point the, the way this movie came about was they had these sets made because they wanted to make a sequel to masters of the universe which and, flopped hard. Yes. Yeah. Not and in they, my heart it didn't <laughs> <laughs> and they wanted to make the spider-man movie and they wanted to be able to use the sets for Share sets for both those movies mm. to save money. Well, Albert I'm sorry. Pune, for Masters of the Universe and Spider-Man. Spider-Man. Yes. Yeah, because okay. yep. Albert Pune was actually going to direct both of those, yes. right? Yep. He was going to do Spider-Man and Masters of the Universe mm-hmm. 2, but like his version was they were going to shoot all the uh, teen Peter Parker stuff, mm-hmm. then take a six-week break while he would shoot Masters of the Universe 2, mm-hmm. and then... The the guy playing Spider Man would bulk up, and then uh. they would film the second part of Spider Man. There's a trailer, oh, because Canon, of course, releases their like you know of promotional course. material. So there yep. is a trailer for the Spider Man. Oh my god! And then wasn't Joe Zito like supposed to direct that Spider Man at some at point? At one point, yes. Well, they could have used one of the guys from this movie as uh, Craven the Hunter. Because he kind of fits that role. Who's the big guy that Rolf? Rolf, Mueller. yeah, he's a big dude. Yeah, this What's is his first movie. Well, eventually, I because I keep on thinking that he was like a buddy of Schwarzenegger or whatever. Because mm. um, I think it's because he played Conan the Barbarian in the TV show. Okay, uh, Rolf Mueller did, but um, he was another like German. He plays in all those like German uh, Viking, you know, uh, yeah. uh, roles. Mm-hmm. Um, so. But that's like because I who did uh, did Canon didn't do the the Punisher did they? No. There was like this was a, an, so. a time when Marvel was like in the toilet. Yeah, Fantastic Four. Remember was yeah. done by Roger Corman's company, yeah. and, uh, Chris uh, Columbus. It wasn't or something. worth anything. The yeah. company wasn't worth anything at the time. Yeah. No. And I mean, so they were just given the rights away. Oh yeah, everything. selling away and all. This that is stuff. our sliding doors moment as a society. Can you imagine if Marvel did just completely collapse and didn't exist? How different of a world we're living we <laughs> yeah. be living in. Wow. Well, we were almost the there. <laughs> I want to see that parallel universe. What what movies are they watching? I don't think <laughs> we haven't done the Punisher, the Dolph Lundgren. Punisher. No, we no, haven't. It's been on my list. Yeah. So they did Captain America. Mm-hmm. Obviously, that one got made. Spider Man mm-hmm. did not because mm-hmm. I believe that uh, Mattel pulled the rights yep. after like some of Ken's checks started bouncing. Yes. Uh-oh. Because they, because I mean, you remember, like eighty six was those two Toby Hooper misfires, but mm-hmm. then they spent like a fuck ton on uh, Sylvester Stallone. Yep. For Cobra and Over the Top, mm-hmm. which thank God they did. Mm-hmm. But Over the Top was a f- huge failure, and then <laughs> Masters of the Universe they spent a bunch on yep. that failed, and then I mean, like these movies crashed. Yeah. They were they cost so much, and they just crashed. Mm-hmm. And what was, wasn't there something else like right around that time that like, oh, Superman 4. Yep. Oh, the quest, quest for, for peace. peace. Which famously had its budget cut like in half. Yeah. Like right before they went. Yeah. Yep. So then Spider-Man implodes. And so they'd already spent $2 million building the sets and the costumes sets. for Spider-Man. Now, you have just seen this movie. Uh-oh. Okay, so I'm telling you that there were costumes and sets from know, Spider-Man like, you're sets. and Masters of the Universe yep. too. Yep. <laughs> well, see, this is why <laughs> this is why I mentioned in the movie. This is why everything is just draped in dirty sheets. Like yep. that's them covering that part of it. Let's make it more dystopian. Yep. Dirty sheets. Exactly. Dirty sheets, dirty sheets. Holly, the set is mostly the beginning of the movie when we're in quote unquote New York City yeah. in the future. Holly's having a hard oh. time. <laughs> I was like, it was an abandoned factory. Right. Yeah. yeah. And, and a several. And, and, a, a, and point, a pond. Yeah. A field. Like <laughs> yeah. Spider-Man yeah. can't do much in a field. Well, they no. they had to, they had so they had to take what sets they had built 
and try and recoup some money. So I will, they made this movie for five hundred thousand dollars. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh boy. I will say at the end of the movie when they finally get to Atlanta, sets galore. Yeah, I'll give you that. Yeah, that's, ah. their, yeah. that's their moment. I Atlanta. wonder did they did they shoot that all first? I don't know. Right. All right. Well, we've kept you on the hook long enough. What's this movie about, Michaela? What's going on in? It's Cyborg. about a road trip to Atlanta, Colin. <laughs> yeah, it, it's a yeah. dystopian road trip to Atlanta. Atlanta. Um, one group's going by sea, one's going by land. Yeah. Who will get there first? Yeah. It's very Huckleberry Finn, if you think about <laughs> yes, it. Yeah. Very Huckleberry Finn or uh, Peter Panish, as we discussed. <laughs> right. The movie. Oh, it's definitely Peter Panish. Yeah. yeah. Um, JCVD is a hero that had his whole family taken from him, because... How else would you be a hero if you right. didn't lose everything? Yeah. yeah. Um, but this is, and this is even sadder because it's his like post apocalyptic found family. Adoptive family. Yeah. Right? Yes. Right. It's the, the family yeah. he never knew he wanted. It's not like the world started ending and he was able to take his family along for a little while. No, no. Nope. He found them like in the midst of he's, the tragedy. So he's failed twice as a father, is what you're saying. Wow. At least. This so. has a moment that, because uh, it's trying to be like a spaghetti western, mm-hmm. right? That's what it feels like. She's like, they killed my pa. And it's like, oh my God, <laughs> it's so bad. When she it's, said, it's when she said that, because she, <laughs> Brailers, she actually said that. Yeah. 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 Like, the, word for word. <laughs> and it doesn't, it doesn't jive with the rest of the movie, no. man. No, you're like, what What are we doing here? Right. And it plays a little yeah. bit of that kind of whistle uh, in the music, which mm. kind of you know, makes you think of uh, uh, Good, the Bad, and the Ugly. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a scene where, so basically the movie's going to, there's always going to be these flashbacks, which is kind of uh, expanding on what actually happened. This movie's half flashbacks. And it's the, a, uh, the other half is a, slow motion. And, no, it's like a third, third flashback. I was like, I was like it's like a third motion. flashback. <laughs> And by that we mean you see the flashbacks and then you see them again. I was just yep. saying, but yeah, it's two thirds because we get them twice. Yeah. <laughs> or, because or half of the third is one part and right. repeated is exactly. the other part of the third. Yeah. So this movie is uh, um, extremely economical, right? <laughs> that's, a, that's a nice way of saying it's it. You, because Albert Pune is, is a visionary director because he had uh, a script which he came up with in a weekend. Mm. If you could uh, believe it. I, I do, I do, movie, yeah. I right, you know, he literally had right. I believe, dialogue. I believe that it was like, and it wasn't the whole weekend. I think he was like maybe like part of his Sunday afternoon, like, yeah. like and when you forget you have homework and you gotta do it Sunday afternoon before school. The next right, day is like yeah. That. yeah, 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 yeah. Because I would like to remind you all, No Holds Barred was also written in a weekend. I would argue more complete narrative <laughs> to that movie than this one. You know what? I'll give you that. <laughs> Well, it's a movie that's uh, a disgusting narrative, but a narrative. Yeah, no, for sure. But this is a, a pure cinema movie where Ooh, you, in don't, what way, Colin? you don't actually. I'm going to need you to you expound that? on that. Well, because uh, you know, like uh, other art forms, you need words, you know, to actually uh, kind oh, of. Uh, oh, you know, so he's leaning into the visual part of the visual well, medium. Yeah, it's a combination of because uh, you, you don't. It, everything's very terse. You don't actually need dialogue. Are you calling yes. this a silent film, Colin? Well, that was the director's original intention. What? He wanted it to be an operatic black and white, like mostly silent film. Is that why JCVD is, <laughs> is is playing to the back of the theater in this with his expressions and his running and everything? Cause, uh, was cause he? Because I was sitting there going like, does this guy's face change? All-? Well, he when he got mad. He glares right. a lot. I was going to yeah. say, he's very uh, sullen at certain points. He's but- pensive. Mm-hmm. Yes, he is constantly <laughs> thinking in flat. Always brooding. Mm-hmm. Yes. Always so brooding. Always it's a, brooding. It's a masterful calculated performance by <laughs> yeah, you know, sure. JCVD. Well, but when he is trying to emote or express how he's feeling, he he goes for it. Oh yeah, so there's that so. scene where he's crying in oh, the yeah. rain. In the rain. Yeah. So, yes. <laughs> and, like so many and, and we could feel his heart breaking. Yeah. It was, it was very. Yeah. It was very. When moving. he sees people get murdered and he's kicking doors. <laughs> 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 So Very. much, so much yelling and grunting in this movie. A lot, yes. like, so much, but also a lot in just ADR. Like he must have exhausted himself <laughs> dubbing himself. Yeah, right. his, yeah, yeah. his breathing and his. <sighs> <sighs> well, you're saying the original version was intended to be this black and white thing, and mm-hmm. then uh, how how'd that go over with the canon? They said, do, you, "Do you know what we do here? <laughs> this is it. This ain't it." <laughs> they said, "No way." They said that no one's gonna go see that movie, and you know what? They probably were right about that. But no one, well, it did okay financially. Doesn't, uh, yeah, because I think it actually did. It actually perform. made a lot of money yeah, based because on its of that, budget. Yeah. that trailer, yeah. you know, and I think <laughs> this was the first time that I actually took notice of Jean Claude Van Damme because he was in these like sports movies, you know, the right. kickboxer and stuff like that. Yeah. But, you know, science fiction movie, it was up my alley. It was like, who is this guy? Jean Claude Van Damme is like the heir to Schwarzenegger or whatever. Oh, damn. Right? Okay. Um, mm-hmm. 
so did you know you probably did okay so i know that you know for years uh, albert pune has been sitting there going like they bastardized my movie oh will we ever get to see his version of cyborg uh, did they bastardize? albert pune is one of those people always saying that he's gonna make a sequel to all of his movies oh, always yeah. saying that Mm-hmm. Not necessarily acting on it, so I'm sure. Well, he puts it out there in case. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You he made a that. sequel to Sword. To yeah, Sword. exactly. Um, but would you guys be surprised if I told you JCVD re-edited this movie himself? Um, JCVD did. Yes. Okay. Well, that would be yes. Good. Okay, because he uh, because the test screening went horribly. Oh. Received very poorly, and JCVD said, "Hey, with Bloodsport, I re-edited it, and that movie was a hit." Give me two months and I'll do it with this movie. And so they did. And this, that's the movie we watched. So Pune is pissed wow. off. He's living his whole life going like, <laughs> I had this artistic statement that I was going to do. Yeah, because did you see all I the blue think, light in this movie? Mm-hmm. Well, his original black and white version was going to be metal as fuck. And it was going to have <laughs> like heavy metal music all the mm-hmm. way through it. And because he's got now. OK, this I know I'm down for as I was we like, were, I'm on board for this. Yeah. As we're sitting watching the movie, we're like, what the fuck are these people's names? Because they don't talk. But in the credits, we're told that it's Gibson Rackenbacher or whatever. Oh. Yeah, because and uh, Fender Tremolo and Pearl Prophet. And, and these but are nobody all, ever says names. I know. No, Zylo. What's because they're all like Zylo and Lyft and. No, they're all fucking guitar and yeah. uh, and, yep. and uh, Gibson, amplifiers Fender, and, yeah. uh, yeah. and yep. stuff like that because this is a metal movie. Yep. <laughs> it's a heavy metal movie and it needed a heavy metal score. And so Pune's all pissed off. Oh, we didn't get like, it. Well, they also uh, cut the shit out of this movie. The ratings board. Yeah, I believe that chopped down a lot. It yeah, originally it got an like... X rating the first time it went through. Man, so. yeah. there's some, right? There's some beheadings in this shit. Mm-hmm. And there's some like some good stuff that could have been in here that. Yeah. None of this, which we Trimmed see, because it's yeah, all cut out. We, but we can, you can tell that it was there yeah. mm-hmm. and removed we, because angles don't work right. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we get to see a hand chopped off, and then someone gets slapped with the stump. That so nice. that was pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, it does happen stump very slap. quickly, though. Mm-hmm. Yeah. one of the few things that survives because I think right. there was a couple of like knife impalements, or that would have gone on longer. We oh, actually yeah. see the blade going into, or a, uh, a decapitation that mm-hmm. you actually would have seen. What wasted wasted potential in the modern era? Oh, okay. Mm. It turns out that the guy who was originally the composer of this movie had a rough cut oh. on VHS, oh. and Albert Pune was finally able to get his version of Cyborg, the director's <laughs> good, <cut. laughs> put really? back together off of VHS tape. Wow. Yes, it is out there right now. And you can see it. Damn, maybe I we should have watched that. I was so. not brave enough to watch it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, yeah, it is on VHS. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, no. Off of, you know, whatever they 1982 did. VHS. <laughs> yeah. Yikes. Oh, um, no. All right. I'm curious. I know. But so for only about like 10 minutes, I'm curious. Mm-hmm. So Van Damme plays mm-hmm. a slinger because the original title of this movie, I believe when it was a script, was Slinger. Did that they? Was like a yeah. Did they coyote? ever? Like the people who uh, you hire to get you across the Rio Grande. I think so. That's what he does in yeah. this okay. uh, futuristic to get Western city. apocalypse. Right. You pay me, I'll get you through. Yeah. And oh, so- it, oh, another. Oh, he's he. This is one of his claims I was talking about. He, Pune uh, says he's currently developing a prequel called Cyborg: Rise of the Slingers. Haven't you always wanted? I mean, I've been waiting for that movie for thirty years. <laughs> It, just, sure. call, okay. just call sure. it something else. Just don't call it Cyborg, <laughs> though. I mean, I know you got to do it because of the sequel stuff and all that, but the Cyborg of this movie that we just watched, minimal. Yeah. And I was disappointed. And I, I mean, I was very happy with what we got because, wow, that was some <laughs> some stop motion, creepy ass shit. It, I will be haunted by that. Haunted. Yeah. And like, it, or if you've ever seen it was, I think it was uh, Robocop 2, which we did here. Yes. yes. The part where he gets cut up and it's mm-hmm. just animatronic. Uh, what's his name? And that is also mm-hmm. yeah, like Didn't Uncanny Valley. Like, like RoboCop was like one of the last major movies that used stop motion animation. I mean, this is yeah. like the end of that era. Right. But there are like a couple of scenes in here yep. that kind of took you by surprise because like, oh, we're doing, oh, you got a budget for, you know, whatever yeah. the animation. Uh, because <laughs> Phil Tippett stopped in for a half hour. It's like, here you go. Yeah. I'm not sure who, because I know Fantasy 2 was credited. So yes. that would be Gene Warren. Uh, Greg Canham's Credited with the makeup effects were probably all cut out of the movie. Um, yeah. So Pearl is Pearl the Prophet. 
a woman from Atlanta, the CDC, although Every it's never Every time named. they start to say it, I think they're going to say Atlantis. Oh, and yeah. I know it's because yeah. we just watched Raiders, but like, yeah. especially the future sci-fi setting, it feels like they should be saying Atlantis. Or so, something, not Atlanta. It always sounds wrong every single time they say it. Yes. Yep. And they say it a lot. We're going lot. to Atlanta. 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 They're going to be real disappointed with Atlanta for the yeah. way they're building it up. <laughs> so let me get this straight. So she's a human woman who yes. undergoes an operation that basically removes her entire skull and replaces it with cyborg. cybernetics. And yes. she is now a cyborg. And the reason that she undergoes this treatment is because in the post-apocalyptic future, the world has been decimated by a plague. Yep. Mm-hmm. And so she heads into the wasteland of New Jersey. Yep. <laughs> yep. Mm-hmm. Accurate. To find <laughs> the data. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Which once she finds it, she'll upload into her cranium and bring that back mm-hmm. to Atlanta. Yes. Right. Yep. That is it. Yep. Because okay. the best I can figure out. <laughs> That's that is like all. why couldn't they just write it down? Because it's data. Haven't it's, you it's seen okay. that? Johnny Mnemonic? It's you got a lot of fucking data. I actually walked out of the theater of Johnny Mnemonic because oh. <laughs> I was a child and shouldn't have been watching it. <laughs> Stay tuned for Johnny Mnemonic. Yeah, Johnny yeah, Mnemonic I, I'll tell you right now, I would like to watch it because like, I was like 10. Because you always wondered. <laughs> I wondered. I was like, maybe I missed a great movie. I don't know. I don't know. Oh. We'll do Johnny Mnemonic and do a double feature with Free Jack. There we go. Yeah, <laughs> yeah the forgotten. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, cyberpunk. Yeah. Because that was when like William Gibson was writing his neuromancer books right. and all that shit, and it was okay. Maybe uh, that's why he's Gibbs. <laughs> Maybe mm, mm, it's because mm. of the Gibson Stratocaster. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah. yeah no. uh, <laughs> you don't know shit, Connor. Right? <laughs> um. So anyway, she is beset by yeah. uh, or her so escort. They, they basically killed. turn her into R two D two, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. In, yes. in a in a scene that obviously had to have been very cut down because what we saw of it seemed very bloody. Like mm-hmm. I, yeah, I assume there was did. a whole operation scene because her head's like out on the table, yeah. And there, her eyeball comes up and jellyfish is out of her head. Yeah, mm-hmm. yep. actually pretty. Like it was pretty cool. But, no, but that's my problem. This was the cool stuff that I wanted to see, and they cut it all out. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Ugh. Well, she doesn't make it to her. Uh, well, she makes it to New Jersey, but apparently, after she gets the data, she is hijacked by pirates. Yeah. Future pirates led by Fender. Mm. Mm-hmm. Fender is played by Vincent Clinton. Fender is a pretty menacing villain. I'm really just not realizing Fender Strat, Gibson, like I'm, I'm <laughs> yeah. Pearl. Yeah. yeah. I'm just not We're getting it. Saying, like Car Fender was the first thing. And Fender. They uh, just so rarely say anybody's name. I didn't yeah. Pick yeah, up I didn't on. even yeah, think about just, it. Now I'm yeah. thinking about it. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. it was going to be metal. Yep. Unfortunately, yeah. we got synth music yep. uh, from yeah. somebody's MIDI that he was playing mm-hmm. a Casio keyboard <laughs> yeah. in the basement. But, okay. Yeah, it's unfortunate. So, yeah, because this could have been maybe this could have been really good with a heavy metal soundtrack. Well, Fender couldn't, couldn't hurt. I right? think like this casting right of of, of Vincent Clint actually does kind of help this movie because yeah. like he is uh, a, a you know a presence. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, to describe him to you who haven't seen the movie. He looks he, like Goro if Goro was he a He reminds dude. me of Goro. Yep. Yeah. He looks like Goro. Like he yeah. just needs an extra set of arms and he kind of feels like Goro. Yeah. For Mortal yep. Kombat. Yes. Why did yes. they not just cast him and give him an extra pair of like puppet arms. I wanted to look It'd it up and perfect. see if, if it wasn't him. Yeah. yeah. Look it up and see if it wasn't him. I don't think, I think that it, was just a puppet, right? No, I, no. I thought Goro no, was No, there was somebody puppet. in there. Yeah. I th- yeah, but I mean, you don't need to see his face. This yeah. guy, no. he's got... He's, yeah, he's got like... he He's a he's a dark... um Like a, a darker skinned man, but he's got like the bright blue eyes, mm-hmm. which yeah. is a creepy contrast. Yeah. And then he's got like dreadlocks... Long ponytail, like dreadlocks. a long ponytail dreadlocks. He's very tall. He's very muscular. very like angular, very face. angular. Yeah, yeah. he's really got a pronounced chin. And yeah. yeah, he wears these gigantic black sunglasses. Mm-hmm. The brand I have no idea, but I mean they cover. They most look like of his Oakley's. Face. Well, he looks like yeah. Brett the Hitman Hart at a certain point. So yeah, yeah. And he also <laughs> he wears does, like he does. Ones. Yeah. chain mail armor. Yeah. Right. Yep. Another he's got the cheekbones too. Yeah. The yeah. very mm-hmm. and he, when he very when sharp. He, when he does the, you know, I mean, you see these teeth. Were they silver or gold or something like that? I'm they sure look they like were. really tarnished gold, of yeah. some metal of some sort. One just looked kind of black, but yeah. He's got a good snarl. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, well, what? the only other thing I ever remember seeing him in, he was one of the uh, the other, not the, um, the ex-presidents in Point Break, but he was the other uh, surfers that oh. confront... 
oh, Keanu yeah. Reeves at the at the uh, beach. I forgot yeah. about that. He's one, they pan, it's like Anthony, uh, what's his, uh, Red Hot Chili Peppers? Anthony Kiedis. 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 Yeah. And then there's like Vincent yeah. Klin. And, <laughs> you know, yeah, pick, that's right. We're going to fuck you up. Uh, mm-hmm. I think. Um, it's just now occurred to me where I know Ralph Muller from. He was from Gladiator. Gladiator, yes. Yep, yep. yep. That's uh, what yeah. he was in. Yep. He was in Gladiator. Mm-hmm. Sean, you didn't recognize Vincent Klin from Baywatch? Oh. He's in six episodes of Baywatch. Oh, only six? Ah. <laughs> no, I, I can't peg down everyone. Maybe it wasn't Baywatch Nights. That's yeah, that's more the thing. Sean's he probably thing. Uh, a, yeah. If he played a werewolf in Baywatch Nights, he maybe I wouldn't know. <laughs> well, he has... I, st- I really need to watch Baywatch Nights. <laughs> Every know, time right? I think they're all on it. YouTube, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> At least right, there's vampires, two. werewolves. Yeah, weird, <laughs> weird shit. Was that the one Momo was... No, he was in Hawaii. He Baywatch was Hawaii. Hawaii. Yeah. Yeah. Can we bring that to the podcast? Yeah, I know. I'm really interested. The more we I hear about it, the more I'm like, I need to watch all of this. I think... Uh, we'll probably all be very disappointed <laughs> in Baywatch Nights. <laughs> we sat down and be like, seriously, yeah. be like, oh, it's still got Hoff in it. It's not good. That's right. Yeah, because is he in all? Well, okay, right. Uh, <laughs> it's a different, right. different. It's like Donna, it's like yeah. Donna D'Erico. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, um, all right. So Fender and his pirates take uh Pearl, mm-hmm. and they're like, we're getting on a boat and we're getting out of here. Well, before that, uh, Van Dam. Uh, comes upon this right his mm-hmm. his lone slinger his lone gunman mm-hmm. his very taciturn loner sees this woman in distress and steps in to help <laughs> and uh, I did not want to see you die that's um, yeah because the, this remind he thinks that she is actually the woman that he was in love with this uh, woman that he like ended up starting short haired one yeah yeah family with yeah, the paw the, the one who said my paw. Yeah. So what? So I mean, I guess we're we're told this whole backstory, but this sets up his character. So what happens to what's the backstory of uh, Gibson Reckenbacher? Reckenbacher. Fender. Uh, <laughs> Fender right. ropes his family up with barbed wire in a well, and then tells the youngest kid like they'll survive as long as you can hang on to the barbed wire rope holding them up. Yeah. It's pretty fucked up. Yeah. 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 I was like, yeah. it's creative, but it's he and his gang watched up. them sleep at one point. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Watch them had sex Watch and then fall asleep. asleep. Yeah. But just brazenly, right in their open window. Right. There's no the glass window. in these Two windows. Away. They're literally just leaning in It was a hot day. Yeah. 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 Post-apocalypse. And all, the have, all that's been broken out. the air in. Just hanging out in the window. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because we see them move across the country and find this nice little farm or whatever house mm-hmm. where they're going to garden. And at some point... You can't outrun your past, though, Colin. How do that's we know right. it's a flashback? Oh As opposed to a daydream? No, I mean, like, uh, you know, the, what, the is, there a, is there a difference use, yeah. between <laughs> flashback Van Damme and regular Van Damme? <laughs> oh. Yeah. Is, flashback anybody? as the, the most upsetting wig I've seen it's since upsetting. Malone. It's not great. Like, and w- He's got bangs. Okay, what he is does this, have bang, what bangs. Is this look? Wispy, wispy, uneven bangs that are always in his eyes. They're going for, it's some kind of like... I don't know, it's like, like a, a long ponytail with bangs, yeah. Yeah. And it's very weird because, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. you know, that's how, you know, that's younger Van Damme. It looks uh, like it's going to blow off at any second, too. It, does. it looks right. like yeah. there's nothing holding it on. It's like a, yeah, I but can't even describe it. But when the young woman finally invites him into her bed, he cuts his fucking hair mm-hmm. for the love scene. And he keeps When you say love scene... Since. It's very, it very generous. It's very generous to say love scene. Yeah. It is two people standing close to each other in a blue light and staring and then, at each other. And we cut to them on the floor. Yeah. This happens yeah. a lot. Yeah. And it's yeah. But again. we see bare shoulders, so we have to assume. Yeah. We have in to blue assume. light. So yeah. But this is all and it's basically told, you know, again as we said in uh, without any kind of dialogue, and we uh, completely <laughs> understand what's saying because it's all about mood and emotion. That's right. On. Pune is in our minds at this point. He's like, we, you know, you'll understand this. It doesn't yeah. matter. No. Yeah. But in black yeah. and white we wouldn't have gotten that blue light, so how that's would I have known it was a sex scene? But we right. would that's have understood true. that when Van Damme takes his knives and his swords and he puts them in the little trunk that we know that he's giving up yeah. like his life of you know mm-hmm. lawlessness he's settling down and it's all taken from him by the symbolism yeah, yeah. oh man yeah. i was uh, i was feeling that too and, yep. and it's made mention later when he talks to the guy who owns the bars like make sure you strap on your blades for the right reason mm-hmm. <laughs> when you're coming mm-hmm. back into this right yeah, yeah. into the life. get back into this life i still have questions about what kind of currency this world uses he has a success to, to buy their rat burgers. Well, in his yeah, he yeah, has right. he has a successful bar business. What are they paying him with? 
That's a good question. Yeah, I have questions about this. Not world. a lot is established about I mean, this. World no, at all. and I have so many questions. Because I'd say, like, well, yeah, there's no evidence of any kind. I would because I was like, well, bullets, right? I mean, that was also the thing in Mad uh, Max, but mm-hmm. no one uses guns rarely. Hardly. It's mostly it's samurai very swords, mm-hmm. machetes, and knives, and all that yes. stuff. In a lot of, uh, is this? I mean. You know, we say it's like a science fiction movie, but is it more actually an, uh, a martial arts uh, movie? Mm. Not real. I don't know, because to me, like, you have to establish training and a oh, developing so, yeah. a skill. To me, a martial arts movie suggests that there are equal martial arts battles happening, and that's yeah. not what yeah. this is. And right. Yeah, and like you said, they're usually uh, some sort of training right. part usually yeah. comes into that at some point, if it is. Yeah, if there was other martial artists fighting him i would say we could constitute as that but none of the other ones know martial arts mm-hmm. okay except maybe fender but i'm not even sure i think he's i don't he's just, he's a, just a strong, tall, brutal he's just guy. A strong yeah. brute yeah okay uh so anyway uh van damme loses pearl like right off the bat and, <laughs> pretty uh, quick yeah. Yeah. yeah but he also maybe One doesn't job, care man. you know because he's, he's lost so much and that scene I was going to say it was a lot like the quick and the dead, but that came later. The scene with, uh, you know, where the kid has to uh, is going to be responsible for the the death of the yeah. parents mm-hmm. falling down the well tied up with. But I think mm-hmm. it's in Once Upon a Time in America. Isn't that what they're getting there from anyway? Once Upon a Time in the West. Once Upon a Time in the West. Yeah. Sorry. Thanks. Yeah. Um, so but he is recruited or whatever. The moral center of the movie is uh, this character, this girl, and her name is. Right. Who yep. <laughs> uh, Cur- curly hair? I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we'll call her curly. Nancy <laughs> Sue. It's a it's curly some Sue? kind of musical instrument. I was I'm like, sure. she's got to have some brand name name, right? Yeah. Let's see. And uh, Ooh, Zenith. <laughs> <laughs> and Cassio. Yeah. Oh, she'd be a good Cassio. Yeah. Have a good Cassio. Cassie. And she's like, I saw that woman, and I know that I heard the pirates say that she has the the data that's going to cure the plague. Yes. And so we have to go rescue her. And so Van Damme kind of begrudgingly says, like, all right, Well, fine. Van Damme's going after Fender. She's going after the woman, and they both happen to be together. No. So. I'm pretty sure Van Damme's response when she says we have to go get her is just, no. Yeah. <laughs> 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 what do you care about, Fender? Yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> like I said, the dialogue in this movie can be written on a sheet of paper. Yeah. Um, so they trek off and that becomes like, uh, the movie is, uh, less about story and more about plot and, uh, fight scenes <laughs> and chases yep. as the pair work through the futuristic hellscape to try and beat Fender to Atlanta before, because he's going by boat and they're walking and somehow, and it's a race against again, time. Mm-hmm. Fender's going by boat and they're walking. Just keep that in mind. To Atlanta. <laughs> to From Atlanta. New Jersey. Yep. Oh yeah, I forgot we're coming from New Jersey. And, yep. and, and, and Fender and Fender had a had a head start. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. By a lot. But somehow <laughs> somehow they catch up with him. Yep. Well, On they, foot. They catch up with him the first time because they're like Fender's boat will have to come through here at some port, yep. uh, which is not entirely explained. I don't think where it is. Uh, it was somewhere on the junction between Temptation, uh, <laughs> Charleston, and Wasteland. Wasteland. Yeah. Wasteland. Yeah. Oh, that was, it was in the Wasteland. So she, yeah, she's like, we don't want to go into the Wasteland. Yeah, uh, Again, on foot. Yep, yes. they catch up. Yep. As they're walking, walking to Georgia. So uh, sexual tension between the pair? Mm. Uh, I mean, I she, mean, they try. Yeah, <laughs> she she tries to initiate something and he's like, I can't. No, he's an asexual being now. Yeah, it's not. yeah. Because he's like, I don't want to dishonor the memory of this love that I had. You know, whatever. Yeah. Because yeah. they both go swimming in the ocean. Hmm. Mm-hmm. No JCVD yeah. ass in this movie. No. 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 We're kind of looking for splits and ass. Did that hit the cutting marks. room floor? Yeah. Probably. Right. Probably well, although he was probably editing, I was going to say, if he was editing it, he wouldn't have cut that out and <laughs> leave that ass in. No, he, he would leave that in. Like my, my butt is not in this. <laughs> they yeah. actually and he's like, grab the camera. And he's like, insert shot. <laughs> but they seriously gave him like uh, creative freedom yeah. to recut the... Yeah, just like he did with Bloodsport. Yep. <laughs> I mean, well, okay. <laughs> he's a lucky guy. <laughs> <laughs> Which, if you go back to our Bloodsport episode, I'm pretty sure we talk about a lot about how the editing in that movie is not good. <laughs> <laughs> That's a that's a lot of trust in JCVD. Yeah. A lot of trust. Yeah. Canon, that's kind of how they do things. They're just like, sure, why not? They fly by the seat of their pants. And he had made them, I guess, like a little bit of cash there with those first mm-hmm. two movies. So, you know, whatever. It's like, here's your next golden child. Mm-hmm. You know who originally was supposed to be the star of this movie? 
Chuck Norris. You are absolutely <laughs> correct. Yep. One on the Chuck pile. Chuck said no. Who they go to second? Who turned them down? Uh, I don't. I can't, I can't remember. There was somebody else that they went to, and he said no. And it was, it was like martial artist. All right, how about Jean Claude Van Damme? Um, so the pair meet up with Fender, and there's a big fight in an abandoned uh, complex. Uh, Albert Pune loves an abandoned complex. He really does to have a fight scene go down. We there's, were in a prison before. Where we're in just a, a cement columns in this parking garage, as it were, in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, and it's very <laughs> open air. Yes, you know, it just it reeks of cheapness. Uh, yeah, like, yep. oh, look what we found. <laughs> Um, I can't remember. It was anything, it, it, you know, there's a fight between, well, no, this leads to a chase scene that goes on for 30 minutes yes. of the movie as Holly pointed out while we were watching yeah, it. Yeah, literally. I looked at my phone and <laughs> when they woke up on the beach, I looked at my phone and then from then on it was, they caught up with Fender and there's this massive, um, it it's goes. A it, it's a like chase. a chase it's a fight. fight. Chase, chase fight. Chase, yeah. Fight, chase, yeah. So it's a half hour long confrontation. Yes. Like that ends with a crucifixion. Yeah. It goes because it goes through the sewers and then it like comes yep. out of the sewers into a field right. or a swamp. Yeah. Then to the building. Yeah. There's a, there's a fight there and then no then it leads out to the uh, ocean where there's or whatever the dried up ocean where there's a ship with a giant yep. mast on it uh -huh. and Van Damme is so tired the Fender's able to kick his ass mm -hmm. and yeah. fucking crucify him because this is the hero's lowest moment he's crucified <laughs> yep right literally crucified yep. mm -hmm. okay on a ship I just want to say uh, you know that uh, it's rare that you get a movie where well especially Jean-Claude Van Damme he's crucified to a tree and he hacks down to a that, mast to a mast yeah, yeah. and what he fucking hacks down that goddamn mast with his foot Yep. He kicks that thing with the heel of his boot and breaks it down so you can actually get... He, oh, he's also uh, crucified with arrows. They, we, don't, thing. we don't get to see the full process of how he gets down from here, and that's why he I issue with... Foot. It. Yeah, but... Okay, but if he hacks it with his foot and that top part breaks off, how is that helping him? Well, he's, he's, he's going to, like, fall to the ground? Yeah, but, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, but fall, you're going like, to get fucked up. Face yeah. first on a rock. Yeah, that's like, what I'm saying. Like, you can't control it. He's lucky it. he yeah. fell yeah. off the boat. Yeah. Yeah. I think yeah. They, they they pay a little bit, you know, in the in the editing. There's, like, it lands on, a, on like, the, one of the side posts. Yeah, it, like, falls right. to the side and then... Over, and then like, right. Yeah. Thank yeah. God he didn't land on his face. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But this is the the, the last... Temptation of Jean Claude Van Damme, yes. <laughs> right? right here. Like, because he is—he's having that flashback again, and he is uh, emotionally uh, coming to a breaking point, I think, and physically. Right. Like, mm -hmm. as he tries to break himself down, he's also, you know, in agony over his past and his family that he's thinking about, which gives him the—I mean, because he gives up for like a good hour. Who yeah. knows? How well, because the death scene, the the in the flashback, the death scene happens there or whatever, where they drop down the well. Yeah, and that's when he like gives up. His will well, to keep right. going. Yes. But at this point, he's also, dis we didn't mention, he's also discovered that the little girl from his family is actually in the gang now. Yes. That's right. We didn't talk about that. Yes. Yeah. Hallie. Haley? 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 Has joined up yeah. with Fender Stratocasters <laughs> and they're out there roaming the wasteland and Van Damme's finally recognized who she is. She doesn't know who he is, I don't think, at that point, even though she wears a I think she does. he gave her. I think she knows it's him. But she's also been brainwashed by this group for exactly. many, many years, but mm -hmm. she knows yeah. who he is. So once he's on the ground, then the other girl, who's been his companion, but then she got lost because she was fighting somebody, shows up. I couldn't tell who she was in the credits because <laughs> no, there isn't pictures of half these people on IMDb, so I couldn't figure out which one she was. And she helps Van Damme escape. And then the very next night, we see his bandaged wounds where he had arrows through his wrists. <laughs> well, scabs now. It's fine. Yeah, he's good to go. Mm -hmm. Who knows how much time could have passed? Oh, I think it's Deborah Richter as Nady Simmons. I think Nady. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm going to take your word for that. Sure. Yep. It's, yeah, it's got, well, yeah, it's got to be. It is. It is. It's got to be. Okay. That's Sounds name. good. She was, so she's Nady in the movie. Yeah. All right, Nady. Nady, Nady comes to his I don't think that's ever said. No. Not once. I'm going to make a confession See, to Nancy, you so right now. I have seen this movie intermittently over the past 30 years, and I forgot she was in the movie. The yes. whole character. Yeah. Like, I remembered other scenes and everybody else, mm. and I forgot her completely. <laughs> I mean, she is kind of a tag along, literally, in right. the movie, and... And where That's her character like. ends up, I think, like, also kind of like, okay, well, what was she there for? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know? Because she doesn't... 
She helps him she, out of jams a couple of times. She does, but she also doesn't get to see the end of her goal. Like she doesn't. She, I think she dies before she ever sees like Van Damme succeed. That you know, and that they would be able to get the woman to Atlanta. Yeah. So she, yeah, she gets nothing out of this basically. But she does nurse him back. Supposed to, to be help. a tragic character. I think so, but since there's also no love interest there, it's like there's there's no real interest in the character no. as, as relates to the story. No, not even emotionally because like. Uh, Van Damme was just like he rejected her, so. You know. But he felt sorry for her. Well, of course yeah. he did. But then at, at her death, she's like replaced by two women in his life, the yeah, Pearl and Haley, and it's like, oh, okay, I don't even miss that she's gone, right? You know, it's just like, okay, yeah. um, maybe not a wise storytelling choice if you're trying to make your audience actually, you know, feel for a character. <laughs> um, There's um, a lot of problems with this story. <laughs> <laughs> There's no act structure in this movie. No. What? Act one. Get the get. The you know go on the go to Atlanta yeah. yeah the act two is the thirty minute chase <laughs> and act three yep. is the show the final showdown where we get all our people In together the somehow Van Dam and Nady Nady make it to Atlanta now Before remember that. that he's been crucified <laughs> yep and yeah. had to heal up but somehow he makes it to Atlanta before Fender yeah. and the group yep. yep. And we do see that Walking Dead shot of Atlanta, like there's a mat shot, you know. Yeah, they're, yeah. The they're walking on the highway. The highway with the, the boss. Shot. Yeah, yeah. And then we have our glorious. How did final he beat shot. him to Atlanta? <laughs> he was crucified. Um. Yep. It, mm, it makes well, no he sense. He rallied so much. I mean, how did Jesus do so much? He yeah. was also crucified, so you know. Because it is, <laughs> it is a simple story, Holly. It's good versus evil, and good has the the divine power. I, okay. Um, okay. All right. I see what we're, we're just yeah, really going to bat for Christ. This movie. That's yeah. what we're saying. All right. So this is the level we're at now. I got it. All right. I got it. Hey, they put us there. Wasn't That's it? right. It was Albert Pune and his brilliant mm -hmm. uh, mastery of mm -hmm. cinema uh, uh, language. Um. So. Now they, we do that, but I will give him credit for the sewer scene in which the big in which Rolf dies. I thought that was lit beautifully. And we don't know it where Van gorgeous. Damme is. Van Damme's like somewhere in the sewer, but where? Yeah. And it's, all, it turns it's just out, all above lighting, so you get yeah. outlines of big people and shadows, and mm -hmm. it's blue light, but white light, and I mean, moving through it. It the, looks good. The way Van Damme was lit in the suspense, you knew he was going to be in the splits, right? Did you know? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, Did I, you I, know? But I, it's because they show him a little bit. I'm like, is he, it feels like he's going to hang upside down and get someone. I like, the splits surprised me. Okay. I, I didn't know it was coming. I was just like, oh, okay. It, it, but I like that whole scene. Looks good. It's it's a, no, it's a good well. scene. It's a good scene. Yeah, yeah. Only one instance of the splits in this movie. Yeah. That's yeah. a shame. But yeah. we get a lot of roundhouse kicks and kicks to the face by the time we get to the end of this movie. Yeah. True. Because true. Fender and uh, Van Damme have to square off in the rain, in the, rain. In the blue light, yeah. in the thunder, <laughs> and with the uh, fires going all over the place. The fires in, in going, the but also like two feet deep of water. Yeah. 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 Yep. Figure that one out. Yeah. <laughs> It's interesting. It's all like slow motion and, and there's a lot of screaming and so wailing. much yelling. Just a lot yeah, of a lot, a lot of, of just standing and squaring off yelling. Like yeah. they wait so long to engage with each other. Yeah, it's like mm -hmm. they're yelling it within a distance of two feet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I was waiting for a pan over actually in one of those shots when it was kinda like it was Van Damme staring off the screen. And I'm like, they are gonna just pan over and the guy's gonna be like <laughs> right, three the, feet away. Yeah. Yeah. Like inch <laughs> over and it's like he's there. <laughs> that's what it that's yeah, that's what it feels like. That's Fender the geography of this. Takes his glasses off to be like, okay, I mean, it's on. The lack of chemistry with Van Damme and the girl, plus the chemistry between the two of them, it was kind of homoerotic, homoerotic, right? Mm -hmm. Like, just a little bit? Yeah, I could see that. Well, at the end, you had this bit. kind of... Well, like he's probably... You know, he, he would... I think he would have more chemistry with him, because I'll bet, within the process of making this movie, that they would have to practice fighting and everything. Yeah. So, like, I'm guessing, like, they're around each other, and the things they know... He knows more about that man's body... Than, than than anybody else in this movie, I guarantee it, mm -hmm. because they have mm -hmm. to be sparring partners and mm -hmm. they have to do the choreography and figure it out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but do you think that's why there's chemistry thing. between them and not the women? I always wonder mm -hmm. in those scenes like where it. you have to do stuff with your shirt off. Do they always go like, okay, we're gonna do like uh, the six pack like showdown? You know, like I got my six, and yeah. Van Damme's like, well, fuck, man, I gotta go and like because. Fender always looks like he's flexing. He always, yeah. he like, walks like he's time. always flexing too. Like, he's got to be cramped up by the end of these shoots. Just, mm -hmm. like, can't move. Yeah. Oh. Mm -hmm. Well, 
It. Uh, I mean, I am after I do my six pack. Yeah, I know because I'm like I have every been morning. just not living the right kind of life. <laughs> well, <laughs> I, well, yeah. Um, and we've got to get really dystopian around here for anybody to get ripped. I think that's what's going to take for me to get to the gym. Yeah, when you're just like running all day long trying to hunt. Like, right. When you have to run for your around. life every hour of every day. Yeah. You get a little a uh, lot of cardio. So how does Fender finally m- meet his maker? Which time? Exactly. <laughs> Would you be surprised? He gets like know- gutted once, and then he comes back. So <laughs> he gets like the full like knife, like impaled. Like, he gets right. like and stabbed there's, in and the there's stomach. A, there's a lift in there. Yeah. There's a little movement around of that like, knife. That fucker's to the hell. Like, like it's the whole thing. So much so yeah. that we he does get stabbed and falls into the water, and we think after this they're fighting and everything that he is dead. Uh, he does come back in a surprise moment because uh, they always come back. Right. And the fighting continues. But I always thought during this part, like, because Van Damme's punching him and kicking him in the stomach and everything. I'm like, is he going to get in there and, and rip some guts out at some right. point? Yeah. Because like, yeah. it feels like we yeah. have easier access now. But to no avail, nothing. We do get a roundhouse kick onto a meat hook. At the end. At because the end. that's the way you're, because that's like commando. That's like I come in peace. They yeah, yeah. do that at the end. They roundhouse kick him onto some kind of protrusion oh, that's yeah. sticking out from the uh, wall. Cobra as well. Yep. That's right. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Happens in Cobra. We got to bring that back. We sh- yes. Can we just watch Cobra again? Yeah. <laughs> Kicked on this one. Yeah. It's so good. God they, damn they it. I'm, you know, I'm down. Yeah. They didn't end Stone Cold with that. But the only other thing that I'll accept is the uh, grenade line or somebody explodes. Yeah. Yes. 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 Somebody exploding is always a great. Always good. Exclamation point. None of that here. No, um, but and Nady is dead. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. Nady's dead. She got stabbed by a uh, big dude at a certain mm-hmm. point while Van Damme was in a car. Mm-hmm. Trying to kick out the window. Yep. Through a window, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He does end up kicking him in the back <laughs> through a window. Tips. Yeah, that was. There's, yeah, there's some odd choreography here. Not as here. cool as they thought it was going to be. Right? Mm-mm. No, unless he kicks like a piece of glass into his spine or right. something. Right, yeah. Why, why not do that? Yeah. yeah. How was your sense of geography in the fight scenes in this movie? I mean, within they didn't... the. Oh, go ahead. No, they only, they only moved like 10 feet down this road. They feel like they didn't really go anywhere during this fight scene, so. Yeah, it, went, it looked like they had a corner of a set they could use. And that they was went it. from the middle of the street to a building. Yep. That's it. I guess I was, you know, like the, the editing was that kind of, uh, what is it? You play it, like the same action from like three or four different angles. There's like a kaboom, yeah. kaboom, kaboom, mm-hmm. boom, you know, uh, mm-hmm. rhythm to yeah. it to kind of punctuate it. But the way that they were cutting, I'm like, wait, where, wait, where am I in this? You know, and this one's like a yeah. split second. Yeah. This one's, yeah, it's a it's, it's a little chaotic in the editing, especially with the fight scenes and everything. Because I think for me, the bigger geography of where they were was fine. But when okay. we get into the close up fighting, it's just like where where are fists right now? Like you guys are yelling at each other and punches and it, yeah, it's a little, feels a little chaotic. Does it help? <sighs> Does it make the movie more interesting? I don't know. What's, <laughs> <laughs> what's our read on what's going to happen uh, at the close of the film? How does it? leave us with our characters is right. there hope for well yeah yeah he now that he has well because towards towards the end of the movie Haley, 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 whatever Nady? she was no no Haley. oh the other one yeah she was starting to kind of give in because you know he's basically her stepdad yeah mm-hmm. and so she was feeling bad and then when he was about to get the jump on van Dam, she was like no and you know from then on oh, she's, defender. Yeah. yeah yeah right from then on you know she's his daughter again Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. So he has his family back in in a sense. Yeah. Yeah. So he turns just... uh, Pearl over to the Pearl, scientists. Yeah. yeah. Pearl gets CDC. gets home. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. Actually. Yeah. So now we've got the cure for the plague. Yep. And but, but Colin, I think he was always the cure for the world. <laughs> I forgot about that. Oh, I, <laughs> think, I think people like him are the actual cure for this world. That's yeah. right. It's great because it feels like the both the beginning and end of this movie were made up in the editing room, and they yep. just oh, they definitely were fully work or uh, sorry ADR to, to, to <laughs> like explain what the fuck was going we on. We get so little dialogue in this movie to begin with, and the fact that half of it is off screen ADR shit, right, is very funny. Mm-hmm. Like there was so little dialogue, they had to add more afterwards. Bravo, yeah. And even still, with what they added, there's still not a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Did you know this? This was this was a uh, I think. Uh, I think it was the journey was the friends we made along the way. <laughs> that's, what, that's what this feels like, what they're saying at the end of this. It's pretty much the, yeah. But did you know that Cyborg 2 starred oh, Angelina no. Jolie and Jack Palance? And what? Elias Cotillas? We should have watched that one instead. What? Yes. <laughs> a, what? there was a Cyborg 2? Yes. Yeah. What year? Like 90. 
91 or 92. Damn. Jeez. And I saw it, and I remember thinking it wasn't too bad at the time, but I'm sure I would reevaluate that now. And there's a Cyborg 3. Oh, my goodness. Which I didn't oh. see, so is I don't know if there's a line. Is there a connection in between? No, the second movies? one didn't. It had a very different look and feel. Angelina Jolie, I believe, is the Cyborg in that movie, and Elias Cotillas mm. is to... Uh, cyborg 2 Glass Shadow is what it's called. Oh. oh. I do not remember it with that subtitle, but okay. Oh. <laughs> Glass Shadow. <laughs> We yeah. just put words together. It'll sound mysterious. <laughs> that was the naming technique. Okay, Cyborg Ooh. 3 is called Cyborg 3 The Recycler, and Zach Galligan is in it. Oh, <laughs> And wow. Richard Lynch. Oh, my God. And Malcolm McDowell. Oh, my God, guys. We have to watch this. Oh I know. See, God. don't you feel like you missed like Kat? a whole... S- you and guys are... Okay. Kato Kalen is in this? Oh, my God. We have to watch this. <laughs> I won't have this sequel talk around here. Like, you guys, all you people in your, in your hate of sequels. Well, I'm surprised I've been that been telling you, you for years you can get this stuff. Now that you've seen this, Sean, now you are, uh, are designated... Now oh, now you. it's up to yeah. me. Now uh-huh. it's up to you. No, no. You know what? We're going to... This is all going to go against you. I'm never picking a sequel you know again. What? What if I tell you they kill a cat in it? Yeah, there you then go. Then are you going to pick it? Then he's going to pick it. Then he shoots to the top of his list. How dare you? And you you know, Sean, no matter you what cyborg sequel you pick, it'll be the one where a cat dies. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Cyborg 4, cat death. <laughs> didn't uh, did Pune, I thought I saw a cyborg movie in his, another cyborg movie oh, in his no. resume, but maybe not. Uh, I didn't see one. Unless cyborg it has Dark DVD. Genesis. I'm sorry. That's oh my god, right. no more Genesis so, in yeah, Dark. No, no. That's just the term. Maybe that was combined. the prequel that he's trying Outlaw to do. Outlaw the word Genesis in any <laughs> movie title ever. No more Genesis movies. No, 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 no. more. No. Okay, Genesis and no more Bloodlines. Yes. We can yeah. Outlaw Bloodlines <laughs> yes. as a sequel <laughs> undertitle. I never want to. This is the legislation we need to be passing. I think so. There are some things that we should set in the bylaws. Bloodlines. No bloodlines. Fuck that. No bloodlines. bloodlines. No Genesis. I'm I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll second that. Co- co-sign that bill, <laughs> yeah. Senator, okay, right. Senator yeah. Collins. You'll co-sign. I'm going yeah. to make a movie called Genesis Bloodlines. <laughs> <laughs> if you really want to bother me, spell Genesis <laughs> wrong like Terminator did. be out there. <laughs> Genesis Bloodlines. <laughs> Well, we've talked a lot about Cyborg, but what you want to know is whether or not you should go watch it. You need to find out what we thought of it. In order to do that, you're going to have to stick around after we read some of your mail. And to do that, we're going to have to summon our mailman. And his name is Igor. Bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Why, thank you, Igor. He's, he, he's absolutely a cyborg. Oh, I was so. going to ask if you ever thought he's been to Atlanta. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I think there were. I think he came from Atlanta. Yeah. I think he was studying studied in Atlanta. Oh, and I'm he sure, escaped. I'm sure the CDC had their hands I mean, on him at some what point. What years do you think Igor has in him? Yeah. <laughs> like if That's they could get true. a hold of him, yeah, like we could. He's maybe like, he has the cure too. Yeah. He's half penicillin at this yeah. point. Yeah. yeah, just give him everything. He's Eventually, yeah. something good will come out of him. All right. Well, we want to let you know how you can participate in this interactive portion of our show by following along on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. Or Twitter. At Sat Freak Show. Or you can email us. Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. Or you can follow along on Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show. About tonight's movie, Cyborg, Adam Kaler writes in and says, So, He-Man's adventure on Earth causes Courtney Cox not to appear in the Dancing in the Dark music video for mm-hmm. Bruce Springsteen, thus sending the planet into a post-apocalyptic nightmare. Weirdest sequel to Masters of the Universe movie ever. <laughs> Missed opportunity of money savings for canon, splicing the Jean-Claude dancing scene from Breaking and Pure Gold. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Why not? Love it. Uh, Zachary Marquez says uh, Cyborg is one of canon's best. A legit, unironically good, well-done sci-fi action film but stay away from the abysmal director's cut. Jean-Claude oh. is the one who made this movie work, not Albert Pune, because he's a shit filmmaker. <laughs> oh, wow. wow. Yeah. Some strong opinions Jeez. on Pune. I mean, he has made some bad, some bad movies. movies. Yeah, <laughs> he's like in the Jim Wynorski like, uh, class of, uh, uh, of filmmakers. I mean, right? yes. <laughs> yeah, they, they know each other. Um, Stratos <laughs> Salamanis says, I think this movie was made on a pretty small budget. And one of Van Damme's earlier movies, but it's still a great little action flick. Okie doke. All right. It's a little flick. <laughs> uh, G Money says the sci fi concepts and effects make the film more palatable, but it's always a treat watching or listening to a young, man, young Van Damme perform fight scenes. It's a perfect length film as well. It's four, I give it four out of five boot blades. 
Oh yeah, oh, we nice. forgot to talk about the boot blade. Yeah, blade. yeah. Right. he's got a boot blade. Yep, yeah, yeah. That's, that's all you know. You need to know about it. It's not, yeah. not used in a cool way. Really. I know. No, it's Chekhov's boot blade. Yeah. Boot blade, and it never so, really. Well, gets... I mean, it in it could have been cool because it was a roundhouse throat slit, which would have been awesome if we yeah. had right. seen it. Well, I was telling Colin during the thing is it'd be cool if a bad guy had it and Jean Claude Van Damme had to like break his leg and stab him in the chest with it. Yeah, right. Yeah. Something like that, just, or just kick yeah. someone in the balls with it. Ooh. Just go straight for yeah. the just something where I got the X-ray. Didn't, didn't we get a boot knife into a in. bottom of a chin, into a mouth? I could swear we've seen that at some point. Dune? Oh, that was a boot knife. Uh, was it? We've no. seen a boot knife somewhere else. I've seen I a know boot knife that. in a mouth before. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we've seen a boot knife in Dark Knight, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Travis Legler says, Ah, Jean Claude Van Damme. Well, he's slightly less boring than Steven Seagal. <laughs> I love a fun over the top Sly or Arnold. Hell, even Jason Statham movie, but Van Damme was never my flavor. I hope this was a fun time for you all. <laughs> I get that. He's, yeah. if you don't like kickboxing or karate, yeah, there's not much for you with yeah. Van Damme. So yeah. I understand. He's that, not yeah. very, uh, a man of deep uh, emotional, you know. Yeah. He's not very, he's not, no. he's not super charismatic. No. Yeah, I like, think no. that's his problem. If if I hadn't grown up with him, I wouldn't have any like I wouldn't have any attachment, you know. Yeah, I think I would agree. He's not an emotive person, Mm -mm. which is why Uh, Simon Carter says, I do have a question. What the fuck is going on in this movie? (laughs) When I was a teenager, I loved this movie's action and I got the main gist, but I could never honestly say I understood a ton of it. Later on, I found out it was originally much longer and got butchered. And maybe that explains it. Yeah, uh, I am yeah. curious what all is missing. Me too. Yeah, I may, may make my way to that. <laughs> uh, it's probably I on it. YouTube. I was going to say, I, really, I think it at least deserves a fast forward. Cyborg, <laughs> the director's cut. I keep uh, skimming through. Yeah. Novato Judoka says, ah, this childhood staple of mine was on repeat quite often. Yeah, it ain't great, but damn if I tried to emulate being a strong, stoic, silent type dude in movies like this. <laughs> Be gentle on it, guys. It's worth an upgrade from VHS to Shot Factory Blu-ray. At least Hard Target is still waiting in the rafters. Yeah, you know? Hard Hard Target. Sure is. Every time I see clips of that circulating online, I'm like, damn, my God, I need to bring that soon. There's like, like a director's cut of that out now, yeah. too, isn't there? Yeah. So. We should say Colin has a Blu-ray, so clearly we're not, you know, yeah. he sees something in it. <laughs> oh, it's not- been on my list for a while. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Yo, Jimbo Ice says, I don't remember the movie very well, but it was a regular watch in the early 90s for me. All I remember was that Fender was an iconic and imposing villain. Yeah, he's a good villain. I'm surprised. Maybe I shouldn't be. I'm surprised this is so many people like I viewed this when I was young. It's like I have not heard of this movie or seen a yeah. second of it for many years until like the least most recent years. So, man, Vincent Klein should have been in Stone Cold. He would have fit yeah. in as one of those bikers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that would have been awesome. Yes. Two weeks ago, we watched a movie called The Nest. Action Dude writes in and uh, says, I remembered this movie poster, this movie's poster art- artwork as soon as it was discussed on the podcast. Crazy how it makes me admire the artist's rendition and want to upchuck the pizza I had for dinner at the same time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that looks more like a yep. rock album cover. Yeah, right? Than a movie. It looks so cool, though. It look- that's a cool look. I know. Mm-hmm. You'd see that movie. Mm hmm. Yeah. Huh? Uh, Michael Whitaker says, when you said Igor was controlled by cockroaches, I actually pictured more of a ratatouille situation. Uh, <laughs> That's much more charming. Although he's got just, no hair, he's just pulling on like nerve endings. Yeah, pain. yeah. Move. <laughs> That's much more adorable. <laughs> it's, oh, it's like Babu Frick is back on yeah, Igor. Uh, long live Babu Frank. Yeah. yeah. Yes. I watch that loop of him laughing the rest <laughs> every of my time. life. Yeah. I love it so much. <laughs> and uh, we said that uh, uh, in our social media posts that um, not since Creep Show had there been so many uh, cockroaches in, some, in one place. Uh, Grant Parrish reminds us that there was always Joe's apartment. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. I try to yeah. forget that movie. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Now we're mm-hmm. all thinking about it. Yep. <laughs> All right, so now we're going to go around the table and tell you what we thought of tonight's movie, Cyborg, starting with... Holly. Ooh, hi. Hi. <laughs> what do you think of Cyborg? Um, Didn't love it. Okay. Didn't hate it. We've seen worse. Not my favorite Van Damme movie. Had, had some entertaining bits, but... I think it misses the mark overall. Definitely not enough cyborginess. Yeah. Could use a lot more. I could use more blood, more violence, more music, like something to give this movie a little more punch. 
Um, or kick. Or kick. Mm -hmm. Or both. Yeah. 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 All of the above, really. Mm -hmm. I just want more. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah. There's there is like ten words in this movie. There's there's nothing. <laughs> you joked that the script was like ten pages long, but I think it that's probably generous. Actually was. Yeah. <laughs> like oh no, there was a lot of like all right, we got here for the day. How do you think we should do this? Yeah. As they look around, yeah. like well, we got the whole day. Mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> we got the whole day they, sh- they shoot for a little bit. And they're like no, we're paying for the day, so we got to keep going. Yep. Come up with something. <laughs> um. Yeah, I think you could probably skip Cyborg. There's some better Van Damme stuff out there. Um, there's better action out there. There's better Cyborg out there. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. uh, I don't think you're missing much. Like I said, if you choose to watch it, it's not terrible. We've seen way worse. It's 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 tolerable. It's palatable, but it's eh, it's not great. So I'm gonna say I'm gonna say pass on Cyborg. Colin, what do you think? I think it's the only Jean Claude Van Damme movie that I own. On, uh, wow! Yeah, I know, right? Wow. I'm like, I was trying to think, like, what else do you I... don't own? Universal Soldier? No, mm, and I movie. don't have Hard Target either. Yeah, it's like, and those are, would be better movies. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Why do you own the worst Jean Claude yeah. Van Damme movie? What's well, not the it's worst not the Jean worst. Claude it's Van Damme movie? The, the cool. I think it's a nostalgia thing uh, because, like I said, the, you know, the the trailer of this movie made a big impression on me. The movie made a big impression on me. I think when I was younger. Um, I know at the time that I watched it, I was uh, not uh, aware of, um, you know, how movies were made. Right. <laughs> what what separated a good movie from a bad movie? It was basically like, does it have like three good scenes in it? Yeah. Does it have like a lot of, you know, action and no talky parts? Yeah. You know, that kind and of thing. And it had boobs. That's all you needed. And it had boobs. Yeah. And, yeah. That's all you needed. And, yeah. Twice. And, mm-hmm. uh, and the captain, actually, you know what? Uh, forgot to mention two things about this movie. One. Uh, I noticed that the the uh, heavy metal uh, like the bad guys, yeah. they're equal opportunity. There's uh, women like badass <laughs> oh, yeah. bitches there coming are in some there, yeah. Women, yeah. <laughs> you know, oh, yeah. fighting along, you know, in there. Yep. And I wish they'd given them cooler fight scenes, but yeah, yeah. they were badass. They could have been cooler. Yeah. Yeah. And number two, uh, apparently during the film, filming of the movie, uh, Van Damme with a prop knife uh, cut some guy's eye out. One of the, and <gasps> he got his sued years yep. later. Yep. Oh, blinded permanently a blinded a guy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. Um, yeah. So there's that. I mean, how can you not love this movie? The, the history of canon films implodes in one. I mean, I mean it's did that's they, more interesting. Did than the they movie. at least <laughs> pay to have the guy to have a cyborg guy to replace? He it? got a settlement. Um. So. Yeah, from what? it was yeah, from, from what? Van Damme, Damn, right? yeah. Yeah, what? From Van Damme. <laughs> it's a valid question. <laughs> yeah, I think this uh, movie functions as a historical, a valid question, but a bad joke, historical document. <laughs> and uh, I know, I I don't know. I enjoy this movie, but I cannot absolutely, at, in any kind of way, defend it because I mean, <laughs> any any criticism that anybody brings up about this, they're probably absolutely right. Yeah. However, I have a lot of fun with it when I watch it. I mean, even now tonight, you know, I'm sitting there going like. Well, I mean, the action's not all that great, but it's not horrible. You know, it, it was enough to keep me interested even this time around. And it was like discovering a whole new movie because I forgot the character of Diddy was uh, was in it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so I was like, oh, what what happens with her? Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, I would. I'm uh, this is. Yeah. Really? Marginal. Yeah, what? Did I forgot that she was in it or no. that I would recommend the movie that you would. Honestly, look at someone and be like, yeah, sit down and spend your time watching Cyborg. Yeah. All what? right. It's like the best Van Damme movie. No, okay. It's I, not, I just said okay. it wasn't, but yeah, what? Okay. It's okay. got it's cy- Cyborg okay. futuristic. I'm just saying, right now. take the nostalgia is, out. I think if you take the nostalgia out, it, it probably has a problem. Yeah. <laughs> it has a problem. Just one. Just one problem. Uh, yeah. Just one. <laughs> But I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna. Okay, so fine. I'll be the one guy in defense of the okay. visionary. You're gonna be all right. Of Albert <laughs> Pune, telling me you need to see Cyborg for yourself. Uh, Sean, what do you think? <laughs> um, yeah, Cyborg. It's man. I, I, everybody seems. It seems like the attitude is like, yeah, it's pretty middle of the road. Like it's not gonna. It doesn't go above and beyond. But it's also not a horrible movie. It's uh, it's it's got some. I mean, it does have some good parts. I do like, I forgot his name already, the main bad guy. Fender. I do like Fender, whoever the actor is. Uh, he's got a presence to him, especially with the eyes and everything, and his constant flexing. Um, I think he makes a good bad guy, but Jean-Claude Van Damme, like, needs to do a little more. I know he doesn't, but and he saves it all for the uh, 
uh, the art of you know martial arts and everything. But I need a little more from you, dude. Um, that in this movie does seem like it got cut down quite a lot, which takes away from the movie. Uh, I think it could have been far more interesting had those elements been in it. I'm curious about the director's cut, but I want to hear about this. What? You gotta, yeah, you got to see it. Report back. Okay, I think. I mean, <laughs> that'll be my assignment for for next time, and I, I think that's the way I'm going to go. But I I can't recommend that you would. Yeah, that you should sit down and watch this. It's not. There's more entertaining stuff elsewhere. There's far more entertaining Jean Claude Van Damme, Van Damme stuff anywhere. Just go to the one scene in Kickboxer where he's got his eyes wide open. You'll love that. <laughs> um, but no, I'm, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna recommend Cyborg. Even after hearing about it from Colin for many years. Finally seeing it, I cannot recommend it. So, yeah. sorry, Colin. Was it a letdown shot? <laughs> <laughs> Michaela, take us home. Oof, cyborg man. If if you like knife fights and puddles, I got a movie for you. <laughs> this is the <laughs> one. Yeah. Fields of water. I did like the landscape of the the fight in a field. It, I think it's just even if it is brought for cheapness. Yeah. Like the visual is kind of cool. If you like people standing in knee deep water stabbing yeah, each other. It literally looks like but then the water gets to flick up whatever no, but it they're kicking. But it, it was like in cool. reads. It literally looked like they were fighting on a Nicholas Sparks uh, yeah, book. Yeah. Like, it, it looks weird. <laughs> like a Florida drainage ditch. Yeah. yeah it's <laughs> what it looked like they were standing in. Um, it, yeah. This movie commits the cardinal sin of just being boring. And that's the, that's the problem is like. It should be more exciting and more crazy and more over the top than it is, but it just is kind of boring and kind of dull and there's not a lot here. So I don't think I can recommend it. I think Bloodsport is a much more exciting movie, so I would definitely go watch that. I mean, go watch Hard Target, too, and do your homework in advance for when we eventually watch that, because we <laughs> will. But yeah, I'm, I'm not a JCVD person either, Um, but... I just I I feel like I don't have strong feelings about him either way, and I also don't have strong feelings about this movie either way. Like I'm mm-hmm. just kind of like I know this movie's gonna exit my brain immediately. Yeah, there's just yeah. nothing to it. So I'm just like, if you want to watch it, fine. But like I just don't feel strongly about it at all in either mm-hmm. direction. So I'm gonna yeah. say no. Pass on. Mm-hmm. Pass on. Cyborg. I think we don't have strong feelings because Van Damme does not emote strong feelings. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, think, I think we yeah. get it's this a back and forth here, yeah. buddy. And this you're not giving true. us to me. You're not so giving yeah. me anything to work with here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, yeah, this is most past. most dramatic. Uh, well, I haven't seen him. I mean, yeah. That's the only problem. I'm sure he got better as he. Oh, uh, JCVD, uh, that movie. You ever see that? I, I haven't seen, seen it. it. I, I haven't people seen it. Praised yeah. it a lot. Yeah, yeah. he plays really himself. He like yeah. There's this whole like monologue that he gives. It's actually uh, it's something else. Mm, all right. Uh, all right. Well, that's Cyborg on the Saturday mm-hmm. Night Freak Show. Uh, next week we're watching a movie that's chosen by Colin. What are we going to watch next week? All right, so if I say, I'm going to give you, uh-huh. this is the clue. There can be only one. Really? Yeah, why not? You know, because there's like a whole cinematic legacy associated with this movie and TV series. We're watching Highlander? Everything. We're watching Highlander? We're watching Highlander. <laughs> <laughs> next week on the Saturday Night Freak Show, we hope you'll join us. And until then, ladies and germs, the basement is going dark.